We're on the road and in your neighborhood all this week. Welcome to Detroit. We're live from the Boys and Girls Club campus on Tyreman, just east of Southfield Freeway. Now, take a look at this map. Here is where we are in relation to downtown Detroit. We are on the city's far west side in the neighborhood, connecting with you and covering the stories that you may not normally see, but they are so important to share. Good evening, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. And I'm Damon Fernandez. We want to say a huge thank you tonight to the Boys and Girls Club for welcoming us in tonight. I'm going to tell you it's a hot spot. There's yoga. There's cooking right behind us. There is beat making. There's a contest going on tonight. We'll be talking about that throughout the show, but this is definitely a special place. It sure is. And you know, Karen, we could not go through this week without a stop here in the 313. I think we're supposed to say what up, though? Well, you're right. It is 313, but particularly this is the 227 and the 228 because there's a lot of pride, obviously in terms of zip codes yep. as well. That's the truth. So we want to tell you exactly why this place is so important, and I'm going to say it's the people. When you meet the moms, the dads, the teachers, the folks that are really raising children in this neighborhood, there's a specialty, there's a big heart, and I want to take, uh, take you along to see who we met. Detroit's West Side. For those who grew up here or live here now, they know the special spots like the barber shop on Grand River in Southfield, where Anthony Allen has turned his barber chair. Let them know that, you know, you can be all you can be. Into a counseling, motivational chair to help the young men in his community. You have to think about how your life is going to be later on down the line and then work toward it, you know, work toward a goal. You like my therapy. Conversations like this are happening throughout the 227 and the 228. Some reference the zip codes as a reference point to these neighborhoods. A community with so many stories to tell, where families are trying to do better for the next generation. Hi guys, how's my kindergarten doing? You guys doing good? Meet Principal Rosa Adams at Barton Elementary. Our school is about a small, private, nurturing feel. When you visit here, the school feels like home as they shape the children growing up here. We greet our kids every morning at the door with a high five or a special welcome. What makes this school so special? Because it's a small community school. Ms. Adams knows my children like the back of their hand. Mm -hmm. She knows me like the back of her hand, and it just works. Monique Jernigan is a mom of two. Her nine and 10 year olds attend Barton Elementary. We're that small jewel that's right there in the inner city that people don't even know about, but we're here and we're making a big statement. And you're shining. We're shining. We're out patrolling, as we always do. I've been doing it for 12 years. Ron Strickland is a local father who spends much of his time patrolling the streets to make sure the kids get to school safely. Sometimes the parents call me and ask me, can I come talk to the children? When you visit this West Side neighborhood, the love, the pride, the helping one another, you can feel and see along the neighborhood streets. We all come together, stick together. We always talk to that. No matter what color you are or not, it's just the fact that you live in this community, help the community. Your dad uses a lot of his time to make this place safe. How does that make you feel? Let me feel good knowing that he cares about the students and stuff yeah. around the neighborhood. That's Damari Strickland. This sophomore at Cody High is following his father's path of helping others in his neighborhood. I like to help out people, the students with their work. The Strickland boys love to talk about how their neighborhood and how their school has shaped them and so many of their friends. What was your biggest lesson you learned here? Life lesson. Life lesson. Um, one of my teachers, Miss Smith, she always told me, be a leader and not a follower. Just always be yourself. And you know what, that really exemplifies this community. Be a leader, not a follower, and that's exactly what's going on behind us. That's the truth. You know, Boys and Girls Club are so significant in communities. Right now we're in the Big Sean mm -hmm. music production studio. These students are having a blast back here. Another big story here on the city's west side and really throughout the city is health care and the city taking proactive steps to improve survival from cardiac arrest is really one of the most important issues. Yeah, every AED in the city, people want them to be uh, notified. They want them to be logged. These life-saving devices can be used by anyone to deliver a shock to a person whose heart is beating incorrectly, often saving their lives. The problem is finding it immediately, one of those devices. Now, Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us live from the LS Lassed Senior and Youth Center in Detroit with the solution that everyone can help with. 
Yeah, DeMond and Karen, you know, when a person goes into cardiac arrest, seconds count, from bystander CPR to the use of an AED. With every passing moment, a person's chance of survival decreases. But this completely free app can tip the scales, helping everyone find a nearby AED. And Detroit needs your help to help it become a heart-safe city. Detroit 911. What's exactly what happened? I just came in the room. When you call EMS, one of the first things they ask about is an AED. Listen to me. If there's a defibrillator available, send someone to get it now. Tell me when you have it. There are defibrillators all over the place. I think people see them everywhere, right? You walk through a building, you walk through a mall, you see a defibrillator. According to Dr. Robert Dunn, medical director for Detroit EMS, the problem is remembering where you saw it in an emergency. But what if 911 operators knew where the AEDs were? They could direct you to the nearest one. The answer? An app called PulsePoint. The PulsePoint Foundation created this application to use for free that kind of crowdsources that initial okay, here's an AED, I'm going to take a picture of it, I'm going to tell you where it is, and then has a back end that here in our dispatch center can be connected to our 911 call takers and fire dispatchers. Once an AED is registered in the app by anyone and verified by Detroit Fire, when someone calls 911, they can immediately tell if there's an AED nearby and direct someone to it. Whether you live in, work in, or just play in the city for special events, this can help save your life if you suffered a cardiac arrest. And everyone can be part of the solution. Make sure you've got the PulsePoint AED app on your phone. If you see a defibrillator, look on the app, see if it's there. If it's not, follow the instructions. You just hit plus and you go through that and add that defibrillator to the PulsePoint app. And then we'll do the back end part of it and confirm it. And according to Detroit Fire Commissioner Charles Sims, getting more AEDs into the community is a priority. Ideally, I would love to see one within three minutes of every location within the city of Detroit. Um, that's a strong and aggressive goal, but, but ultimately that would be the goal. Until then, we'll just continue to put them out there as fast as we can. So, I, again, anyone can help collect the location of AEDs. Let me show you how easy it is. First, you need the PulsePoint app on your smartphone. Now, when you open the app, it's going to pre-identify your location. You just press the plus to add an AED. Now, you can see here, I can choose the Lassed Senior Center as my location. Then, the map will show an AED symbol, and you drag it to its location on the building. Then, on the next screen, you describe its location, and it should be as specific as possible. In this case, we are going to say first floor senior room in front of main entrance. Then, it's going to prompt you for a photo of the AED. Now, you should take a photo of the AED and its location, not just the device. And then you submit that information, and a fire official will verify it when they can, and then the AED becomes part of the official database. It's that simple. Back to you. All right, Doc, so quick question here. Does that process ask for any person's private information? Well, no, actually, and there's no private information required, but that does bring me to another interesting point. Entering AED information actually benefits everyone, but I'm, I'm going to appeal to everyone's own self-interest it could benefit you specifically, since it's likely that you're entering information on places that you frequent. So if anything happens to you in these locations, you might have just aided in your own survival. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Doc. So get this, folks at the company Detroit Bikes say they believe streets are best explored on two wheels. And I can tell you the bikes they're making in Detroit are pretty good. Yeah, and it's just right down the street. So we want to take you inside, show you a little bit of what's going on there. I can tell you they're doing some awesome stuff. They manufacture about 10,000 bikes a year. For some jobs, it's seasonal, but they brought 40 to 50 jobs right to this neighborhood. We went by the other day, and we could not believe how many people were actually buying the bikes, doing uh, the e-bikes, definitely doing a boost here business-wise in this West Side community. Yeah, good stuff in another place, putting Detroit on the map. You know, Karen, we haven't been in your neighborhood alone. Help me, Hank. Our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, has been traveling along with us and he's been pretty busy over at Cuzzo's Chicken and Waffles. Let's he, send, I was going to say, let's send it over to him because I know the crowd's big. It's big. It's been, out, it's been around the corner. 
Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, we have had a huge crowd. In fact, people were lining up here at four o'clock. Big thank you to the team here. They're not even usually open uh, this early, but they opened up early for us. And the people, they certainly came out. Take a look at some video of our uh, little meet and greet. We had a few people who just stopped on by because they wanted to say hello. But we've also heard from people with a lot of different consumer-related issues. People worried about their taxes in their community, landlord battles. Uh, I heard from a couple that told me about a nightmare vacation, and they're working right now with the insurance company trying to get some of that money back, and now we're gonna work and fight for them to try to help them out in this process. We're gonna stay here for a little bit. We've got a few more people that I still need to talk to here. And of course, if you're in the area and you wanna stop on by, Come on over, say hello, maybe have a little bit of chicken, maybe some waffles. Uh, we're here hanging out. We'd love to see you. For now, we're going to send it back to you guys. All right. Hey, Hank, thanks so much. We know you're getting an earful over there. Thanks for the work you're doing.